there is a burden placed on teachers that is going to drive great teachers away and kill the ones that decide to stay. I've been an educator for over a decade. I've taught in highly diverse schools, low, middle, upper middle class, international schools. I've worked in many different schools with many different families and students. Despite working in many different schools, there is a mantra that is being preached to educators in the States. This mantra is, teachers, you are shaping the future generation and it's all on you. And after a decade of teaching, I'm finally pushing back on this. This is a job, this is not my identity. And for many years, it was. From what I've learned from seasoned educators is that this is only a job and that is how I can be the best teacher. And here's the thing, don't leave, but just follow along with me. Majority of educators are women. This is important to addressing the burden that has been placed on teachers. Women educators inadvertently put on the mama bear mentality with their students. The mama bear mentality is this, giving up yourself for the good of your students. I have witnessed this love, this mama bear mentality, seeing it in my wife, seeing it in my four older sisters. Women do this. It is something that is embedded in their DNA. This mentality comes out when they have to care for someone else's child. So if you have majority of the workforce being preached that it's all on them and combining that with a mama bear mentality, you're gonna have a lot of teachers burn out. And a lot of new teachers see this and assume that this is what is expected of them. So teachers will do whatever it takes for the benefit and the good of their students, regardless of changing new curriculum, new teaching mandates, contract negotiations, lack of pay, lack of resources, lack of support. Teachers ball on a budget, okay? And they're willing to pay whatever it takes to engage and reward their students so that they are successful. This is why pizza slices are so thin at pizza parties. When we come in and do a pizza party, teachers feel like Jesus coming in with a couple pieces of bread, a couple pieces of fish, and trying to feed 5,000. See, teachers will do whatever it takes. We will take whatever little resource that we have and just MacGyver the crap out of it so that our students can be successful. What are you doing with that gum wrapper? Well, maybe we can get around this fuse problem. This is a job. This is not my identity. And it's taken me 10 years to realize this. Myself and many others are willing to do whatever it takes so that our students have the foundational skills to be successful and productive citizens in our community. However, the demands the list for teachers to do has become so great that it's become very, very difficult to teach. So how do we fix this? How do we take this burden that we have placed on teachers? What do we do? One. Stop giving teacher new things, new curriculum, new teaching strategy. Um, a quote I heard from a keynote was, stop giving teachers new things and let us get good at the good things. It's a gradual suffocation of new things that is eventually going to suffocate teachers out of the profession. Somehow education has adopted the technology tradition of new is better every single year. Every August, it's like the Apple or Google event, and the district is show, showcasing some new thing, some new discovery, and sometimes it's you know a new thing, but really the only new thing is a new name. The second way we can fix this is changing our perspective, our lens on how we view education. We need to see education as a collaborative effort between teachers, parents, the school, and the community. Now hear me out, I've, I've been blessed with amazing, amazing parents and families doing whatever they can, going above and beyond, helping out their child and the classroom. But there's some individuals that have zero clue on what's going on in education, zero clue on what teachers have to do. And the pandemic was a wake-up call to the workload of what teachers have to do in order for students to be successful and also meet the demands of what education is putting on us. 
Another way that we can help change the perspective is elevating teachers, respecting teachers. Today you see, how many clips do you see of teachers being beat up by students? There's zero respect for teachers. And I believe that what we need to do is we need to see teachers on the same level as a doctor or a sergeant in the military. I think one way to change that lens to build a different definition of education is instead of jury duty, how about we have members of the community sub in classrooms? Or how about this? How about we have school board members go into each grade level and sub in different classes so they understand what's happening in the schools. They understand what teachers are going through. They understand what students are doing on a daily basis. I have worked with some amazing teachers and it is a thing of beauty. It is art to watch them work in the classroom and how they take this student and they just carve and reveal to them the potential they have. It is amazingly beautiful to watch and I've been very blessed to work alongside of them. It's going to be very sad because a lot of families, a lot of generations are going to miss out being taught by some amazing educators. So take the time to thank your child's teacher and for those that are in power there needs to be a change and if there's no change then a lot of great teachers are going to leave and the ones that stay will be burnt out. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, make sure you click and subscribe. Um, I am recording this video in my classroom and it's after hours and it's been a long week. And I am very thankful that you are joining me on this journey and I hope you are blessed and thank you for watching. Bye.